Ulan Bator, ghost of a once great empire, fallen on hard times. In winter, the harsh Siberian wind brings temperatures of minus 40, cold enough to chill the soul of the coldest Cold War warrior. This morning, Revolution Square is deserted, except for Mark Laporte, a Quebecer who works with street children here. Though this time of year, kids are hard to find. Most have taken refuge under the ground, in a dark world beneath Mongolia's frozen steppes. Hello? Anybody there? Up to a thousand children spend their winters underground, amidst the maze of heating pipes that bring hot water to the city. Up above, it is freezing cold, but down here, it is plus 40, with the buzz of insects and the sound of children who have formed a strange subterranean community. I feel uh, quite uncomfortable when I go in a manhole. Scandalized, shocked to see people living in such conditions. The choice is to live there or on the street. In winter, on the street, it's impossible. Uh, you will freeze. These teenagers have called this home for half their lives. This sewer is mine. I don't have a home. I've been here for nine years. My brother died here. Mark is determined to help a few kids escape this gloomy existence. He's bringing them hope from an exotic world few of them can even imagine. Twelve thousand miles away in Montreal, this is the home of the world-famous Cirque du Soleil. A little circus that grew and grew. The Cirque started out as buskers on the streets of small town Quebec 17 years ago. Today they are the most famous circus in the world, with permanent shows in Las Vegas and London. Now the Cirque's founders are trying to give something back to the streets where they started with a unique program called Cirque du Monde. They've hired trainers to travel the globe and teach circus skills to street children. The head of the program is Paul Laporte. We try essentially to use the arts of the circus hein, to work on the reconstruction of the identity of these young people who have been extremely blessed in their life. It's our grain of salt, it's our good d'eau. Hein. Cécile Truffaut is a former busker from Quebec City who trains kids in Africa and Asia, and all her missions have one goal. I want them to succeed. Those kids have been through a very tough life, and they are in a mood of I cannot do nothing. I'm a piece of shit. I'm this, I'm that. My work is to make them feel better towards themselves and towards what they could do in life. In two weeks, Cecile will leave for Mongolia to help Mark Laporte bring some magic to the kids of Ulan Bator.
Mongolia is an ancient land where Genghis Khan once ruled the steppes, creating the largest empire the world had ever known. Today, nomads still wander these plains, eking out a living like their ancestors. This is a country that time has largely forgotten, until recently. In the last decade, Mongolia has left the orbit of the old Soviet Union and made a painful transition to the free market. Nowadays, Genghis Khan has become just another celebrity, promoting everything from visa to vodka. A third of this country's 2.4 million people are here in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia's capital, where they've come looking for jobs that usually don't exist. Since the collapse of communism, much of the population is unemployed and desperately poor. Many have gone back to livestock, embracing the old nomadic ways. Buddhism is also making a comeback now that communism is gone and there is room to worship other gods. Rock pile altars like this now cover the country. <laughs> Cecile has just arrived and she's heading out to meet the kids she'll be training, a bumpy hour's ride from Ulaanbaatar. Most Mongolians are still nomadic herders who move their tents with the seasons. But there's one group of tents out here with a larger purpose for the eight short weeks of Mongolia's summer. It's a sanctuary and a circus summer camp for former street kids. And they're all waiting for Cecile to arrive. They were happy to see me because it had been a year we didn't see each other and I would like to be an octopus because I don't have enough hands with just two to hold them because they are something like 70, 80. All want to grab my hand, so an octopus has more chance. <laughs> this is Cecile's second summer here, and she's brought along a sack full of new equipment filled with wonders. The camp is run by Mark Laporte's agency, Save the Children, in partnership with the Cirque du Soleil, which provides the trainers and equipment. That includes a parachute to start off summer under the big top. Most of these youth come from broken homes, and were picked up in the streets or sewers by Mark's staff and police. When the camp ends, they'll move to shelters in Ulaanbaatar, where they get schooling and continue their training. The circus program has been running for three years, and the older kids are getting the hang of it. The staff includes two Mongolian circus trainers, Erka and Batar, both trained by Cecile to work with the kids when she leaves. Several girls have a talent for contortion, which has a long tradition in Mongolia. But others are just discovering how to use their bodies and what it's like to be a kid. <laughs> this boy has just learned his first somersault, and he's making up for lost time. He's also making up for hard times, says Cecile. 
Many of them have been badly treated. They've been beaten. Some raped. Some. I don't want to make a dark story. You know, it's not Charles Dickens. It's a fact. I see really, really small miracles in the first weeks. Kids who were untouchable or very aggressive, and after a few weeks they become touchable and non-aggressive, and they speak to you. <laughs> Mongolians learn to ride a horse before they walk, but these kids are late starters. And not all are ready for the real thing. Most have lived through hungry years and have faces too old for their age. Everyone gets three square meals a day, sometimes four. But disease and poor nutrition mean some of them may never grow. The hardest thing to learn is trust after life in the streets of Ulaanbaatar. Several kids were child prostitutes. Others were thieves like Arslan, who arrived here three years ago after a shaky start in life. Arslan's mother abandoned him when he was a boy. His stepfather lost his job when communism collapsed and the family became homeless. At 12, Arslan ran off with some older boys and helped them to rob passengers on trains. I didn't want to steal, but I was hungry. I was afraid a lot. On TV, I had seen people in prison for stealing. I was scared to end up in prison too. But with those children, I learned to steal anyway. He spent summers on the street, and in winter, he moved into the only warm place he could find. I had friends and enemies too. Sometimes, while you were asleep in the sewers, they would come down and steal your clothes. They wouldn't leave you alone. There were fights, but I was young, so I was beaten most of the time. Over time, Arslan became sick with an infection and was picked up half-conscious by police. They brought him to one of Mark Laporte's shelters for kids in Ulaanbaatar. This is where the circus kids live after the summer camp closes. They go to school and get job training. But they also practice what they've learned in camp at a nearby gym. And soon after his arrival, Arslan too was part of the circus program. You, when you send, you send almost without moving your arms. I'm learning to juggle and do balancing acts. I just started acrobatics. It's something I love. When I'm training with the circus, I feel like I can do anything I want. I forget the bad things in life, and that feeling stays with me. The most intriguing new objects Cecile has brought are some shiny new unicycles. The kids will learn to assemble and ride them from their instructor, Batar, once he's been trained by Cecile. And it's a question of balance again. A unicycle is harder to ride than a horse. I can steer the horse, but not the unicycle. Tool came to the shelter four years ago. 
She can't live with her mother because her stepfather threw her out of the house when she was only 10. My mom divorced my father when I was two. When I was four, she married my stepfather. He did not care about my sister or me. He kept asking us to leave. I had no place to stay. At the time, street children were shown on TV a lot. I was so frightened I would become one of them. Desperate, Tool approached an ant living in poverty in the city. She took Tool to one of Mark's shelters for kids, where Tool found a home and a touch of magic. It feels like I'm at home here, and the instructors teach us lots of things. There are school lessons, circus classes, and makeup classes too. Teaching circus arts is a natural way to connect with kids who've been at the bottom rung of society. You put those kids in situation of success, making them try things which apparently are very difficult. So it's our job to find a way to make them realize, I can do that. And if I start to be able to do this, why could not I do that? And this, it's very, very common that we have comments from teachers. Oh, since uh, she has been doing circus, she's, she's better at school. I don't think you could achieve the same results with other activities. I think they have not been lucky in life. So if we could provide them with that little touch of magic through the circus, I'm most happy. They deserve magic for sure. So just how did a world famous circus wind up in Outer Mongolia? The Cirque du Soleil started running programs for kids with Oxfam in the mid-90s, inspired by their own history of busking on the streets. Today, they work with children in 18 countries, but the Mongolia story has an unusual personal touch from one of the Cirque's early founders, Daniel Gauthier, and his wife, Helen. The couple went to Mongolia several years ago to adopt their children. But they were haunted by memories of kids they'd seen coming out of manholes. So they suggested the Cirque open a summer camp to help the kids they'd left behind. We're just uh, grateful because we received the, the best gift of life we could receive. You know, we have two kids coming coming out from this country and there is something we would like to do to help them also to stay there and, and get a life there and get a better life there. Sometimes we are saying that if everyone is moving a little rock, we will move the, the mountain. But we need everyone to move the little one. So we said we, we, we will move our own little rock. Mongolia is a country with mountains of rocks to move. A fierce but forgotten land that's recently vanished from the world's view, much like the kids who live underground. For decades, the Soviet Union claimed to be the socialist paradise. But Mongolia had a better claim to the title because the Soviets paid all their bills. Mongolia is squeezed between China and Russia, and the Soviets used it as a base to keep their military equipment near the Chinese border. Mongolians paid the price for communism 
with a typical Soviet-style police state. But in exchange, the USSR provided good social services and a school system that boasted almost a 100% literacy rate, one of the highest in Asia. In the 1980s, the economy was so prosperous, women were urged to have large families of workers. Eight or more, and you received the order of glorious motherhood, first class, and the lifetime pension. Even nomadic life began to disappear as the Soviets built vast and ugly blocks of free housing, and shepherds got jobs in Soviet factories. Then, everything suddenly changed when the Soviet Empire crumbled and Mongolia crumbled with it. Overnight, the Soviet factories closed and their military bases were abandoned. Most people found themselves without work, food or welfare says Canada's honorary consul in Mongolia, Chris Johnson. The social safety net collapsed. There, um, until 1990, everyone was taken care of. Beginning in 1990, no one was taken care of. You took care of yourself. And so families um, slowly started slipping further and further into the abyss and fractured. As the communist dream ended, the American one moved in. The World Bank pushed for a free market economy, and a new U.S.-backed government promised U.S.-style prosperity. But by the mid-90s, these grand promises had all failed, and life got even harder for ordinary Mongolians, especially children. Amidst the big economic plans, Laporte and the Cirque had a little plan to help save some street kids from becoming hardened criminals. Kids like Monhono, who was brought here by his own mother, desperate to keep him off the street. Monhono's family had once lived comfortably, and he went to school. But both parents lost their jobs after the communist collapse and became homeless. At 10 years old, Monhono left his family to join a gang of thieves living on and under the street. The first time in the sewer, we broke the lock. There were just three of us. At first, it wasn't too bad, but then others started to come. The stink from the garbage was disgusting. Finally, there were about 30 or 40 of us living there. Sometimes we divided up in groups and fought with knives. But not me. I had a bigger kid stand up for me. Grim memories of the sewers also haunt Arslan. The sewer is dark. Even during the day, it can't see anything. There are two huge water pipes. They are scary hot. You put a piece of wood on the pipe and then some cardboard to lie on. On one pipe, you put some wood and make some space for six or seven children to sleep. It's much too hot down in the sewer. But when you get out, it's freezing cold in the winter. I spend the day wandering around the city and thinking, I don't want to go back to the sewer. But I would get cold and I had to go down there anyway. Instead of being in school, children here are scalded on hot pipes and get lung diseases, skin rashes, 
and lice they pick out of each other's hair. There are murders and other dangers, like people who lock the sewers up on the street to keep the kids in. When I was living there, two pipes broke and water leaked in. The manhole was locked and two kids died that way. Twenty miles from the summer camp, the kids are off on a special outing. It's the start of Nadam, Mongolia's national holiday, when nomads everywhere gather to celebrate their glorious warrior past. The Nadam celebration recalls the days when Genghis Khan's hordes swept across Asia into Eastern Europe. But luckily for the West, the ruthless Mongol leaders decided to return home. And within two centuries, their empire had fallen to China and never rose again. In today's hard times, nationalism is rising, along with Genghis Khan nostalgia. And many young people are now changing their name to Khan. The circus kids are spending the day at a small village where traditions haven't changed much since the days of the Mongol hordes. It's a kind of nomad Olympics. The kids have brought their circus costumes. They've been promised a chance to perform at the halftime break of the wrestling match. Mongolians call this the manly sport, and the winners still perform the legendary eagle dance as their ancestors did before them. Nowadays, the victors don't get to do any pillaging, but they do cart away modern prizes like TVs. After hours of waiting, the kids finally get their chance at a small moment of fame. Some are nervous during their first public performance. Others were born to the stage. I'd like to show people here that street kids can do something worthwhile. But the windy day makes many of their tricks difficult. I was scared I would make mistakes. Such this. I was nervous. I dropped one. The contortionists never get a chance to perform, and post-show reviews by the coaches are mixed. The weather conditions were bad, and children were slipping and dropping their objects. They feel slightly dissatisfied. They perform with heart, and also I appreciate even if they missed, they, they, stayed, they stayed smiling, which is a very good performance. They're getting more and more confident, I think. Circuses are the stuff of dreams, but every kid here dreams of being in a real circus, one that was the pride of Mongolia. Mongolia's national circus was world famous until 1990. Erka trained in Moscow and performed across Europe in her 20-year career with the national circus. 
But when the Soviets left, the circus fell on hard times, and it's just starting to rebuild with new equipment and talent. Though contortionism is still what they're famous for. This is a country where it pays to bend over backward if you hope to get ahead. And six members of the Mongolian National Circus now perform for the Cirque du Soleil. And some of the kids from camp may just have a chance at circus careers too. Two of them have recently been accepted into apprenticeship programs with Mongolia's National Circus. One is this female contortionist, the other is Bon Hono. I'll start with the local Mongolian circus, and I hope someday to join a big circus. I just have to trust myself and try and try and try. But Mark Laporte cautions that the camp's purpose is not to create professionals, even if some do make it. I would sure love it to see one of them join the Cirque du Soleil and feature in Montreal, Las Vegas, London, and so on. But uh, that's not a mandate. The ultimate goal is that they believe in themselves, they improve in school, they learn to work with others, trust others, and when they will leave the shelter in a few years, they feel that, yes, I am capable of taking my life in my own hands, so in terms of self-esteem, it's magic. The project's goals may seem modest, but not here in Mongolia, where the simplest of pleasures is a luxury few can afford. Several of last year's graduates have now found jobs at local factories with the help of staff here. Arslan will stay with the project next year, but he's already completed courses in shoe repair and textiles. His caseworker Dawa says Arslan's life has changed directions. When he came, he was a complete illiterate. Now he can read and write, and he's been trained in textiles and circus arts. He used to smoke, steal, live on the streets. He's not like that anymore. Tool's life has changed too. She was a school dropout when she arrived. But now Tool is doing so well in her studies that the staff hope she'll go to university. Tool has been on Mongolian TV several times in news stories about the project. And she dreams of finding a job in show business. I've learned how to stand in front of a big crowd and perform. I met lots of foreign people, and I can talk to them. And now again, I will be on TV with this interview. I used to dream about things like this. Some kids have even begun to reconnect with their families, with the staff's help. Monhono's parents have found a temporary home and want him to move back in. But he'd like to stay with the project another year, even if the circus job doesn't pan out. If I stayed there with those people, I'd be a criminal today. Now I want to be somebody. If I can't be a professional circus performer, then I want to be someone with skills and a job. And for that I know I must learn something. You have to battle to be someone in this life. Whatever these kids end up doing, the trainers hope they use their skills to add to their income by busking on the streets or performing at events like weddings. 
and the kids are about to get a chance to show what they can do in front of a who's who of Ulan Vator. In the past year, the circus staff has arranged for the kids to perform at some foreign embassy functions. Now, as summer ends, they've rented the beautiful old quarters of the Mongolian circus for a year-end show under the big top. The kids are taking the show as seriously as a Cirque du Soleil performance. This is a chance to show off what they've learned during the year in costume design and makeup classes. They're adding some glamour to lives that have always lacked it. The faces in the mirror are healthier and happier than those they once knew, but still vulnerable. Everyone knows how tough life is here, just outside the magic circle of this circus. And even the old pros are nervous. I hope it will be successful. We practiced a lot. A performance is not easy for them. It is very emotional. The Canadian consulate also funds the program and they've invited over 200 guests, including members of Mongolia's parliament, foreign embassy staff, and lots of kids. All here to see this little circus with big dreams. It's easy to see how far they've come in a short summer. Every act goes perfectly, and this time, everyone gets a chance to show off their moves. It's great. There's so many people. I love it. All that applause. It's our best performance. Among the crowd are two special guests, the mothers of Tool and Monhono. They haven't been able to offer their kids much, but they've stayed in touch and are here to see their children perform for the first time. It feels so good that my family is here. I always wanted it. Today I performed in front of them, on the circus stage. It's unbelievable. It feels very good. I can see he's gifted for circus. I'm so excited. She always used to sing and dance, but I did not think she would be with the circus. I feel great about it. My daughter's on the stage. I'm very moved. I cried. This is the first applause many kids have heard in their lives and the guests are almost as thrilled as they are. I loved it. I loved it. I, I mean, I loved it more importantly. Obviously, the kids loved it. The Cirque du Soleil have brought to Mongolia the idea that the circus can do more than just entertain. The circus can give kids hope. 
and I've seen it for two years. You know, the, the changes I've seen in the kids in those two years are tremendous. They've been losers, but then they are winners. They are not anymore like nothing. They are artists. And maybe tomorrow they will be plumber, but promise is it will be here. In the end, few of these kids are ever likely to work in a circus, which takes years of training. But with luck, they'll leave here more independent and educated, with skills to help them look after themselves and their families. Most of these kids know they are chasing an impossible dream. But in chasing something big, perhaps they'll discover smaller dreams of their own. As the brief Mongolian summer ends, there have already been some small miracles. And everyone here hopes that part of the magic lasts, even after the circus leaves town. Oh.